That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. I'm very sorry to announce Chick-fil-A has actually caved to the leftist mob. They announced earlier today that they will drastically restructure their charitable giving. Now, in case you are sitting there and thinking, eh, maybe Caleb is blowing this out of proportion and they just happen to be restructuring and they're just going to do their own charities as opposed to giving to other groups. And so it's just a coincidence that their charitable giving is no longer going to include groups that have traditional Christian views on marriage, that kind of thing. In case you thought that was just a coincidence, here's another quote from that same article from the Chicken President, uh, uh, Chick-fil-A President, Chicken President, that's pretty good, the Chick-fil-A President and Chief Operating Officer Tim Tassipoulos. Quote, There's no question we know that, and as we go into new markets, we need to be clear about who we are. There are lots of articles and newscasts about Chick-fil-A, and we thought you needed to be clear about our message. So in other words, they're absolutely caving to the leftist media mob. He's saying, look, Chick-fil-A is on too many broadcasts, too many webcasts, and as we're expanding into new markets, we've decided we need to drastically reshape our image, and people need to know about who we are and, and our message. So yes, they're absolutely caving to the leftist mob. There's the president and chief operating officer admitting to it in front of God and the entire world. So the idea that maybe this was just a funny coincidence and, and they just weren't doing it specifically to appease the outrage mob on Twitter, no, that's exactly what they're doing and they're admitting to it right here. It's not the dropping of the support itself that bothers me. It's the rationale. It's the reason that they did it. That's what gets under my skin. And what is so astounding about this on the moral side of things is that they had already won the fight. They'd already won. They didn't even have to cave. Like, it would be one thing if they were almost bankrupt from the boycotts and they said, you know what, the, the boycotts are killing us. We're going to cease to exist if we don't do something about it. So, you know what, we're just going to go ahead We'll just go ahead and cave. But they were successful. They were winning the fight. They had already beaten this. J just to illustrate my point here, they were voted the best fast food restaurant in America, America's favorite fast food restaurant, barely edging out in an out burger, which had won for the past three years, which, by the way, is another Christian organization, another Christian company, which to me ought to be a pretty strong indication that Maybe doing things the Christian way, espousing Christian values and expecting your employees and the people in your company's family to operate under a certain list of moral principles, maybe that's a good thing and maybe that really does work. You would think that would have been the takeaway from it, but no, Chick-fil-A does this. And even though they are currently the reigning champion of America's favorite fast food restaurant, they're like, you know what, we got a cave. There's just not enough people that like us. What are you talking about? You're the most popular restaurant in the country, man. You don't have anywhere else to go. And when it comes to their profit margin, they're currently the third most profitable fast food chain in the country. The only ones ahead of them are McDonald's and Subway. And I'm just sitting here thinking, really? You want to catch up to Subway and McDonald's that badly. Subway and McDonald's have been around for a really long time. Think about how much brand name recognition they have. Chick-fil-A is punching way above its weight, especially when you consider how recent their development is compared to Subway and McDonald's and the infrastructure that McDonald's and Subway has compared to Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is not even a, a restaurant that's in every town like the two of them are. And yet they're still the third most profitable in the country. And here's another thing, and this is why I say that they've already won the fight. The free market was already working its magic. They were espousing traditional values. They're even closed on Sunday, and they were the most trendy, most popular new upcoming fast food chain in freaking Manhattan. Even people in Manhattan that may not agree with their personal politics are like, you know what, I like the waffle fries. I like the chicken sandwich. And that's okay. 
In fact, that's a good thing. That's what tolerance is. It's not quite to the level of love like we started out with the show. But the tolerance itself was a good thing. They had already won the fight. They had already proven that they could be profitable and even wealthy, doing things the right way, doing things the Christian way, and still espousing those values, holding on to them, but just giving people good service and, and taking care of people and letting that being sort of their guiding principle. They proved that regardless of the outrage mob on Twitter, they could still do it. And they just caved after they had already won the fight. It doesn't make any sense. And I am predicting, I am predicting that they will be open on Sundays by 2021. It seems to me, based on this move, and I could be wrong, but within a year, by 2021, you can mark my words on this, see if my prediction turns out to be true. They will be open on Sundays. They will be just another fast food restaurant because getting rid of this is getting rid of the thing that made them special. Within a year, they'll just be another Burger King or another McDonald's. Just another company. And there's nothing wrong with being that per se, but you're not something that's unique. You're not something that sticks out in people's minds. You're not a brand that is a shining example for people. Do you know of anybody that like really super loves McDonald's? I don't think that they're going to go belly up. I don't think, I'm not going to sit here and tell you, oh, well, this is going to destroy Chick-fil-A's business. They're no longer going to, no, there's still going to be people right and left that just like the chicken sandwiches. They like the waffle fries and I don't blame them on the waffle fries. I think the waffle fries are delicious, but, <laughs> but anyway, like they're just going to like the food and they're going to go there because of that. Once that Christian foundation is gone though, the thing that made them special, the thing that made them unique and different, and the reason that they had hordes of conservatives and Christians and evangelicals that were willing to go to the mat for them. I mean, you think about the uh, the Chick-fil-A day we had a few uh, years ago where people on the left started attacking Kathy, the founder, for what he said, and Christians came out in droves and, and chose to support. That kind of spirit is just not going to be there anymore. There are not going to be people that are willing to go to the, to the mat over a, a chicken sandwich. Now, they'll do it over a chicken sandwich, and the company actually means something, but they're not going to do it just because. They don't like the waffle fries that much. Now, I'm going to talk about it from the business perspective now. We're going to kind of transition into that, because leave the moral behind. You could be the biggest pro-gay advocate there is, and still look at the situation and say, this was an economically stupid decision. And I'll tell you why. I would tell you if I thought that this were a good decision from a PR standpoint, I would keep in mind, I'm a communication major or, or was, that's what my degree is in. I studied public relations. That was part of my tract. I would tell you if I thought that this was a good PR move, even if, even if I disagreed with the decision that was made case in point, And it just so happens that Colin Kaepernick is back in the news. So I'm going to bring him up now. When Colin Kaepernick did that ad with Nike, there were a whole lot of conservatives that were getting on the internet saying, oh, this is a terrible decision. Nike's going to destroy their business. No, they didn't. And you'll remember that on the air, I remember very distinctly because it was a joint discussion that Joe Hunk and I had, and we both agreed. And I, I didn't know where he was going. He didn't know where I was going. But basically at the same time, we're like, oh, it's a brilliant economic move. Why? Because Nike knows its audience. Nike knew that primarily the people who buy their shoes are young, black, male athletes that have a political worldview similar to Colin Kaepernick's. And even the young, black athletes that buy Nikes, even the ones that actually disagreed with the synopsis that Colin Kaepernick only got cut because he was causing you know, political upheaval, even the ones that were honest enough to say, no, he got cut because he's a crappy quarterback. Even they like Colin Kaepernick and think that the team should have kept him on just as a political statement and paid him money just to basically be a professional political activist for the San Francisco 49ers. Nike made a calculated but very wise risk. In other words, they knew that they were going to lose some customers that were older, more conservative. But the thing is, those people weren't buying Nikes 
in very big numbers anyway. And they knew that they were going to pick up at least a little business from people that were, you know, white liberals that, you know, just happened to want some Nikes, if nothing else, just to show, show their support. And so they knew that their audience, their primary audience, was going to be okay with that message and that they were going to lose a little bit of business, but they would actually make more money in the long run because there were going to be so many people in their primary audience that was going to like what they were saying. And they were right. Their stocks actually did way better after the Colin Kaepernick ad came out. And I predicted that. Chick-fil-A is going to have the exact opposite effect, and here's why. Their primary base are white Southerners, primarily evangelicals. Not all, but that's their primary audience. This is one of the dumbest things that they could have done because they are appealing to an audience of angry, outraged, LGBT activists. If you count up all the gay people, that's about 5% of the population. And the, that 5% of the population, some of them live in the South and the place where Chick-fil-A is headquarters. The vast majority of them don't. The vast majority of them live in other parts of the country where that is more acceptable. And you also have to consider that even if you're lumping in their families and everything else, those are typically not the people that, hey, let's uh, go to the gay pride parade and right after we'll swing by and pick up some chicken nuggets. No, they're not going to do that. That's absurd. There might be a few. But what do you think is more likely to happen? A, a, a gay couple, Hans and Franz, we'll just use that, that they're swinging by the Chick-fil-A after the Pride Parade, or a family of six, let's say a Catholic family of six, that loves Chick-fil-A because of their traditional Christian stances and heads there after Mass. Which do you think is more likely to happen? And I had to use Catholics because they have Mass every day of the week. Evangelicals typically worship on Sunday. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> like, I guess I could have used Wednesday night Bible study. But my point in all of that is they are alienating their primary base. There are few companies in the world that would suffer more from caving into the gay mob than Chick-fil-A. This is one of the dumbest economic decisions I've ever seen. Because, and here's another thing that you want to keep in mind. Let's just say that it weren't a numbers game. Let's let, let's say that there were just as many gays out there that wanted to eat chicken sandwiches and eva, as evangelicals. This would still be a losing gambit, and here's why. The gays are not going to welcome them with open arms now that they've done this. They're just not. And as proof of this, I want you to remember Brendan Eric, who he had to resign after giving money to support Proposition 8. You remember Proposition 8 out in California was the gay marriage uh, thing, and, and Proposition 8 was trying to nix it, make gay marriage illegal in the state of California. Well, Brendan gave money to it. Now, he did this as a private citizen. It was not Mozilla Firefox that was giving money. It was not his company that was giving money. He was giving money, his personal money, to this cause, and the left would not relent until he had been fired. It wasn't enough that it was just personal money. They were boycotting Firefox until he was gone. People are going to do exactly the same thing with Chick-fil-A. The Kathy family, who is conservative and evangelical, still own Chick-fil-A. The leftist mob is not going to relent until they are gone. Now, I don't know if they're actually going to resign or not, but my point is, as long as they are still there, it does not matter what Chick-fil-A does. They still are not going to welcome Chick-fil-A with open arms, and that is a perfect example of why. The, the left just, they're not forgiving in nature. It is against their virtue to forgive. They don't believe in that. Forgiveness is a Christian virtue, not one of the left. And to further prove my point, here are just some of the, and I just, I really did just go through and pull uh, some of the tweets that I saw. So here's just a, a sampling of them. We'll go through them very quickly. 
All right, so we've got one. It's about time. It's sad that you have to kick some people in the wallet to get them to be decent human beings. Another commentator. I commend Chick-fil-A for its change in donation policy. I've never eaten there, and I'm not likely to change that stance until I'm sure this new direction is not just marketing mumbo-jumbo. My family is too important to me, besides it's just chicken. All right, another one. To be clear, Chick-fil-A announced that they're no longer going to donate to anti-LGBTQ organizations, not because they now support the queer community, but because of bad press. Also, to be clear, they lied about this once before. Now, this one is unique because it's the only one where the guy actually said that he would eat at Chick-fil-A. I can now buy Chick-fil-A with a good conscience. They are no longer donating to anti-LGBT groups. But I will point out that he's saying, I can now buy with a good conscience, which implies what? He was actually already buying Chick-fil-A stuff. Now he just doesn't feel guilty about it. Somebody else. It's too late. Now it's too late. You really did try to fake it. Something inside has died and I can't hide it. I just can't eat this homophobic expletive. Another one. To right your past wrongs, will you now donate to organizations that help LGBTQ people? Chick-fil-A. Told you, it's not enough. And we could, we could go through dozens of these, but these are the last ones. I'm sorry, but if Chick-fil-A wants to remake a PR move to win back customers, they need to show that there is a LGBT representation among their execs and a significant financial donation to LGBT youth center organizations. They owe it for all the pain they've inflicted. Again, I haven't seen any pain that they've inflicted, but anyway. Another one. I'm happy Chick-fil-A has stopped donating to anti-LGBT causes, but it isn't enough to simply stop lighting fires. You need to actively repair damage by helping extinguish the ones that you've started. It's a step in the right direction, but there's still work to be done. And finally, okay, that's great, whatever. Chick-fil-A is no longer donating to homophobia and transphobia is fine, but they real they really about it. They can donate that money to an LGBTQ plus communities and orgs, organizations. So that's just a sampling, and I get that Twitter doesn't represent everybody, but it does represent the activist wing of the left party that the that Chick Fil A was trying to appease. Because there's probably, I don't know if it's a majority, but there is a significant portion of gay people that eat at Chick-fil-A and they just don't make a big deal out of it. But those weren't the people that were going out and trashing Chick-fil-A in the first place. The activist that they were trying to appease is represented by Twitter. And the reason that this was so stupid is that even if there were as many gay people as there were Southern evangelicals, this was a really stupid move because now all they've done is tick off their base and tried to appease people that are never going to be appeased. It's never going to be enough. As soon as they did that, they're like, oh, well, they need to start giving money to gay organizations. Oh, well, if they're really serious, they're going to have a gay person on their board of directors. It just goes on and on and on. They're never going to let up. You can't reason with a mob. And Chick-fil-A should have been smart enough to figure that out by now. All they've done is tick off both sides. And as everybody here knows, and this is where I'll leave this, I have for a while now been a pretty big proponent of Chick-fil-A. I actually made a promise to my audience about two years ago that every single time Chick-fil-A winds up in the news and somebody is trying to attack them, that I would eat at Chick-fil-A, but I don't know that I ever shared this detail. The truth is, I don't like chicken. I don't ask any of my friends. Ask anybody that's known me for any number of time or gone out to eat with me. I don't eat chicken at all, period. The only time in the past two years that I have eaten chicken was to go to Chick-fil-A for the photo ops. And because I hated the way that they were being bullied, I hated the way that people were talking about them, I specifically, a person that does not eat chicken, went to Chick-fil-A and didn't just buy a drink or something or make a purchase just for the photo op. I genuinely wanted to support them with my money because I liked the way that they did business. I liked what they stood for. I own a Chick-fil-A shirt and I don't eat chicken. I bought the chicken sandwiches. I bought the nuggets. And they're not bad. But I'm a beef guy. 
I grew up, I mean, I raised beef. I grew up around it. I, I'm a beef and pork guy, strictly. I'm just not a big chicken fan. Yet I was willing to do that specifically because of that. And not only did I go to the restaurant to support them, I gave them free publicity. You can take a look at this. These are different pictures from my social media over the past few months. I mean, you can see, and I apologize. I know that's a lot of Caleb in a short <laughs> little space there, but I mean, you can check it out. You can see, and you'll also notice that a lot of these pictures, I'm eating breakfast biscuits instead, and I'm not eating one of the chicken ones because again, you didn't know this at the time, but I actually don't like chicken. And so there's very few of them. I started going in the mornings just so I could order something and still support them, but also not have to eat chicken because I just don't like the chicken. That's the level of dedication that people like me, that have my worldview, were willing to give you Chick-fil-A. And now, you've just thrown all that away. And done it for a very small portion of the population that's never going to accept you anyway. This is one of the dumbest decisions that you could have made, even if you take the morality out of it. From a business perspective, it's one of the worst moves I've ever seen. Hey, to make sure you get all the updates, you need to go ahead and subscribe and click that little notification bell down there. That gets you a notification every time I post a new Bible lesson or political commentary. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't subscribe, it's because you hate America and Jesus, but I can't think of any other reason you wouldn't subscribe.